This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org. The aircraft trails we see in our skies in almost all cases are not condensation, but rather intentionally sprayed particulates for climate modification and the weaponization of the atmosphere. The following tutorial on the high bypass turbofan jet engine and its design characteristics will confirm this conclusion. Global climate engineering is a lethal, ongoing, and extremely immediate threat to all life on Earth. Short of nuclear cataclysm, it's the greatest threat we face as a species. The power structure and the mainstream media they control have told the public that we are only seeing, quote, condensation trails in our skies. This is a blatant, glaring, and verifiable lie. Even many, quote, independent news sources are completely omitting any mention of geoengineering in their climate reporting. Why? To be clear, if any media source, mainstream or independent, engages in any discussion of the climate without first and foremost addressing the ongoing climate engineering issue, the reporting is a lie by omission, period. Disinformation sites and individuals point to the World War II bombers that left condensation trails, as seen in this photo, as evidence that such trails are normal. What the disinformation sources don't mention is that World War II bombers had water vapor injection systems on them to cool the engines. This is the primary reason we see vapor trails in the case of the World War II bombers. How do we know jet aircraft are spraying in our skies? Because we have up close footage of military tankers and commercial carriers caught in the act of spraying. Because we have up close photos of retrofit spraying nozzles mounted on the pylons just behind the jet exhaust and in line with the exhaust stream to create the appearance of, quote, condensation trails. Sprayed heavy metal nanoparticulates from the ongoing climate engineering programs are the actual source of the trails we're witnessing. Again, these nozzles are not just seen on military jet tankers, but also on commercial carriers. It's likely the commercial carrier personnel are not directly involved in the spraying programs, though commercial aircraft are being used with automated spraying systems. What are other factors? To confirm the ongoing atmospheric spraying, we have countless lab tests from all over the globe verifying massive amounts of heavy metal fallout which matches elements utilized in climate engineering patents exactly. Finally, and most importantly, we know that the high bypass turbofan jet engines are by design nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except under the rarest and most extreme circumstances. The primary objective of this short video tutorial is to make this fact completely and inarguably clear. High bypass turbofan jet engines are by design incapable of producing any condensation trail except under the most rare and extreme circumstances. All commercial jet carriers are fitted with high bypass turbofan jet engines, as are all military tankers. 80% of the air that passes through a high bypass turbofan jet engine is non-combusted. These engines are in essence a jet powered fan. The amount of non-combusted air passing through a high bypass engine is far too high to be conducive for any condensation formation. There are very few exceptions to this rule. One more time, the high bypass turbofan jet engine is by design incapable of creating any condensation trails except under the rarest and most extreme circumstances and even then, any trail would be nearly transparent and only momentary. The jet you see in this photograph is a British Airways flight. Take a good look at the trails behind the jet engines. Why do the two streams from one wing merge into a trail while the other two trails from the opposite wing are aligned in a more parallel fashion? Are the jet engines mounted incorrectly and not aligned? Of course not. The spray nozzles are what is not aligned in a parallel fashion. Moving on to passenger jet aircraft interiors. Those that think that only passengers are held in commercial jet aircraft with side windows are incorrect, as these images clearly show. In addition, the higher the altitude, the less humidity there is. The extremely high ratio of non-combusted air to exhaust in a high bypass turbofan jet engine and the near total lack of humidity at higher altitudes are conditions that completely prohibit any condensation formation in almost all cases. 
Even though higher altitude humidity levels are naturally very low, atmospheric relative humidity levels have been declining even further since the late 1940s, which by the way is when climate engineering was first deployed on a significant scale. Less humidity in a warming world is completely contradictory to the laws of physics. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree of warming as measured in degrees centigrade. The only way atmospheric relative humidity can be declining, given the fact that the world is warming, is geoengineering. The sprayed particulates block direct sunlight, which reduces overall evaporation and convection. The sprayed particulates are also desiccants, which absorb all available atmospheric moisture. Deluge will also increase along with protracted drought as the climate engineers continue to build up pressure in the climate system and as the geoengineers also continue to utilize the weather as a weapon. The official narrative that we are seeing, quote, contrails is the most massive lie ever propagated on populations of the world by the global power structure. If one understands the design of the high bypass turbofan jet engine, and if one considers the fact that the higher the altitude, the lower the relative humidities are, which are low and getting even lower for the reasons already mentioned, the bottom line is this. The trails we are seeing in our skies, whether long or short, are in almost all cases sprayed dispersions. Even if you don't see spraying going on, if there are cobweb-like undefined wispy clouds, silvery white skies, or featureless cloud canopies, all are telltale signs of atmospheric spraying going on. Climate engineering is decimating our biosphere, contaminating the entire planet, and making an already bad global warming scenario far worse, not better. Make your voice heard in this fight while there's yet time. If we are to preserve any part of our planet's life support systems, climate engineering must be exposed and halted. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.